Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Paint with Jade and we are going to be doing just that today. So get your brushes ready, get your canvas, get whatever paints or medium you're going to be working with. And let's get started. All right, now before we get started, um, I'm going to tell you what we're planning on making. So I'm planning on, this is an 8x10 canvas. You can use any size that you like, um, any medium that you like as well, although I'll be using acrylic. If I drop any uh, tips or tricks, just keep in mind that they'll probably be related to acrylic and not um, transferable to other mediums, but I'll try to keep my instruction generic so that you can work with whatever you have. Like I said, I'm going to be working on an 8x10 today. I've done a few paint-alongs and they've been mostly landscape oriented. Today we're going to be working on an animal. It sounds scary, I know, but it'll be fine. Trust me. Just trust me. Colors wise, I'm going to be using quite a few different colors. Um, I've got black, I actually have gray, as well as white. Um, just because the animal that we're planning on painting today is an elephant, so it's easier to just have some gray pre-mixed. I'm also probably going to be using my alizarin crimson and cerulean blue hue. I also have a couple tubes of yellow handy. But first we have our primed and prepped canvas. If you don't know how to prep and prime a canvas, you can just work on a raw canvas from uh, from the store because most of the time these are actually primed. Um, however, if you want that ultra smooth canvas, um, I will put a link in the description below to a video where I go over exactly how I prep my canvases. First step in this paint along is actually going to be putting just a neutral color on the background of your canvas. That can be pretty much any color, but I'm going to keep it very mild. Like I don't want it to be very saturated because it is just kind of a generic background color. Um, so I'm going to be working with the cadmium yellow deep hue and I'm going to mix that with a lot of water and I'm just going to do a light wash over the back of the canvas. I'm also going to try to get the edges around the canvas just because I feel like it gives it a more complete look before you've framed it. And I'm going to bring that yellow color all the way down. Alright, now we got our nice neutral wash background. I'm just gonna take a hair dryer and speed up the drying time a little bit because I'm impatient. Alright, that should be dry. Next we're just going to block in some colors. So the next step, it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to block in the shapes so that we know where things are going to go. And then we can begin working on details. So I'm going to be painting an elephant on a ball. So I want the ball to be blue. And then I'll get some gray down for our elephant. All right, now we have to keep in mind, we can't just draw the ball in the center because with an elephant on top of the ball, we're gonna run out of room really quickly. So I'm going to try to paint the ball uh, in the lower third of the painting of the canvas. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just trying to block in our shapes so that we know where everything's going to go. Now you might think the most logical thing would be to put feet next, connected to the ball. I'm actually going to paint 
an oval shape, which is going to represent the body of the elephant first. Then we can connect the feet from the body to the ball. I've been on a bit of an animal's kick on stream recently. I've been painting a lot of them, so felt inspired for our paint along this month. Wanted to try and keep up that animal theme. All right, that's our gray blob, our body for our elephant. Next, I'm gonna do a circle for the head. And you'll notice that I don't put the circle at the top of the oval. The way that an elephant's head sits relative to their body is actually, they don't really have much of a neck, so the, uh, the head is kind of connected to the oval shape dead center rather than at, you know, the base or the nape of the neck, as we would think. So I'm just adding some legs now. I've got one that I want connected to the ball and then I want him to kind of be like showing showing off, giving a little flourish with a couple feet in the air. So if you didn't catch how I did that, I'm just drawing some simple rectangles, or painting I guess I should say with my brush, some simple rectangles coming from the butt of the oval and just below the head on the oval. For the ears, I'm going to make a suggestion of them, but until we get into details, and shading. It'll mostly just blend in with the rest of the gray blob. Okay. So with the hint of an ear, I'm just adding almost like a rounded triangle into where that uh, that base of the neck would have been. Our trunk goes straight down. And if you like, you can add a little curve to it. So with that shape, I just painted downwards from the very front of our circle, painted downwards slightly at an angle, and then curved it in. And then I connected, rather than keeping it a skinny line, I connected it to the circle shape of the head so that we could get that um, that kind of snout appearance. And I'm just gonna add a little bitty tail. And it's in a very similar way to how we added the trunk just now. I'm just going to the very back of the oval shape of the body and painting just straight down. Next, I want to add some tusks, although we will have to wait for that to dry. So let's get our white onto our palette and I'm gonna mix it with just a little bit of gray so that we don't have a super harsh contrast with the pure white and I'm actually gonna mix a little bit of the yellow in as well to give it more of a bone color So if you can still see it, um, I know I can on my piece, you can still see where the circle was originally in this shape. The tusk is going to start from the base of that circle, 
where the tusk and the trunk, or sorry, where the trunk and the circle meet. And then you're just gonna have it, boop, swoop out. All right. Now you can add a second trunk on the other side if you choose. However, I'm not going to simply because this is a very simplistic, kind of cartoony elephant, and I don't need it to be hyper-realistic. You have the suggestion of a trunk? People will know there's another trunk on the other side. Just going over with the gray, so that we have a more solid base to work with. That's a little better, a little more solid. Let's do the same for our ball. I think I'm gonna make his ears bigger. All right, next I'm going to bring our black onto our palette. It's time to add some shadows. So I'm just mixing some black with a little bit of the gray to give us a darker gray color. And I'm going to use that to differentiate between the legs so that you can tell which leg is at the front and which leg is in the back. go. Just a little bit of shadow. Suddenly we have depth. I'm just gonna add a little bit <clears throat> of that dark color to the underside of the belly on the right side of the leg. So this way it adds even more depth. And same with just a little bit around the butt and where the leg is. And then again at the base of our circle head, our head circle. And because we have our ear about halfway through our head circle, I'm going to add a little bit of dark color. And where our head or our ear shape meets the body, I'm going to draw a shadow outline around where our ear is. The paint is still a little bit wet, the gray, but I'm using this color to kind of mix and create a darker shade and then dry brush in the areas where it is not still wet. adding a little shadow around our trunk. The next few stages, I guess, or steps are going to be a lot more detail oriented. 
Um, so there probably won't be a lot of instruction. It's mostly just adding features and depth to our piece. Just further defining our ear. You might be wondering, what am I going to do with a painting of an elephant on a ball? But depending on how old you are, you may have some friends, or you may know someone, or have family. Just having kids it would make a great gift. I'm going to take a little bit of our gray, some white, and some of our blue color to mix a little bit of a highlight. And in the same way that we had our shadows, we're gonna to go to the opposite sides and add in highlights. And this is just to further add in a little bit of depth to our painting so that it's not just a flat blacks or flat uh, map series of blobs. <laughs> But I mean, not that that's not a look. I mean, can be. But I'm gonna be adding in a little more definition still. Next, I'm gonna add in some toes. So I'm gonna mix up a similar color to what we had the tusk. So a little bit of white, a little bit of gray, and some yellow. I've switched to a round brush just because it's a little bit easier to get desired shape, but I tend to use a filbert for pretty much all of my pieces. Most of the pieces, like most of the, uh, most of all of my pieces, <laughs> if that makes sense. All right, next we're gonna add a tail, and I've just taken a little bit of black and some gray just to tone it down a little. I'm just gonna add a little, <laughs> Just a little tiny tuft. I'm going to take that white, kind of yellowy color, but add a little bit more white to it. And just give the toes a little highlight. So I'm going at the front of each toe with a lighter color to give it that kind of depth. And I'm going to do the same with the tusk. Just go along the top of the tusk. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that dark kind of grayish color and give our elephant an eye. You can get as detailed or not with your elephant eye. I'm just gonna keep mine simple. Go with the whole cartoonish vibe that we've got going. Next, I mentioned alizarin crimson earlier. We're gonna actually use it now, so get that onto your palette. I'm gonna go back to my filbert brush, and now I'm gonna take my alizarin crimson by itself, and I'm going to paint some 
stripes onto our ball. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of white because it's not as opaque as I want it to be. <laughs> So just a touch of white. I don't want it to turn pink, but I do want it to have a little more oomph to it. Okay. And I think I'll actually take the yellow and let's see. Should we have it a straight line? maybe a circle top. And there we are. We're getting somewhere. I'm gonna take some of that blue Cerulean blue hue, and I'm just gonna go over the blue shape that we have because it's still not as opaque as I want it to be. You can still see some of the yellow through it in the background. I'm just gonna add some more blue. And then the other colors, I'll have to add a couple more layers as well just so that they are really visible. And then we're going to add some shading to the ball. I think this is looking pretty good so far. We just need the ball to dry so I can add that second layer. But this is looking pretty good. You know what I think actually might be fun? I'm going to grab a smaller and an almost liner brush. Maybe we'll add, because circus elephants always have fun, like, outfitty things on them. So I'm just painting a sort of diamond shape on the very top of the elephant's head gonna be its little hat and should we give should we give him a back drape as well maybe a small one this one I don't need my liner brush for I can switch back to my filbert I'm not painting it on too opaquely because I do want the shadows that we developed from the gray and the whites mixed together to kind of come through with the red. So as you can see, it's a little bit darker here and a little bit lighter here. So I don't have to shade that. That's it's doing the work for me, which is fantastic. I have the wonderful habit of not waiting long enough for things to dry and then I just try to paint over top. <laughs> then it ends up being a mess, but you can always fix it. So it's fine. It's fine. If you do paint outside your lines like I just did and you're using acrylic, you can actually just take a clean brush and wet it with water. As long as you act quickly enough, you'll be able to remove it. So if I take my brush with nothing on it, it's like it never even happened. Mistake? I don't know her. Oh, 
All right, I'm gonna go back to that liner brush and I'm going to take some of our yellow and I'm just going to draw little tassels and perhaps some embroidery. And we'll do the same over here. Feels like it's missing something. Maybe something along here. Yeah, there we go. That ball looks much better now. Got something else going on. The thing with using yellow is it does usually take a number of layers unless you are painting on top of white. Patience is key. Patience and a hair dryer. All right. We're going to let this dry. And by let it dry, I mean use the hair dryer again. And then we're gonna add a little bit of shadow onto our ball, some highlight. Maybe highlight in the eye. And then I think we're gonna call this piece finito. Get my itty bitty liner brush. Just a speck of white. And I put two dots in the elephant's eye on one side and one dot on the other side. So there's three total. Now, I want the highlight to be roughly in this area. So I'm gonna take my handy dandy filbert, make sure it's clean. Grab a little bit of white, and I'm going to wipe most of the pigment off of my brush. So I want it to be essentially almost dry. I want the brush to be almost dry with just a little bit of pigment on it. And I'm going to very, very lightly go over this section of the ball to give it a highlight. Because our brush is dry, it doesn't put too much pigment on. And if you keep a light hand, what you're effectively doing is something called dry brushing, which is a very, very useful and handy technique when it comes to trying to use acrylic and specifically with 
blending colors because it does have such a quick drying time. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing with a darker color, in this case, black. And I'm just going to lightly, lightly brush the areas where I think a, a shadow would fall. So around the feet area, underneath the body. And it's a very, very light, 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 light layer. You don't want to put too much pigment down because it's always easier to add more than it is to take away. So always err on the side of too little versus too much. And with every completed piece, our finishing touch Our signature. And you don't have to do this part. I like to. But I always add what year I did the piece so that I can look back on it later and see how far my skill has developed. This is our completed piece, and I think that we did a really great job today, guys. If you decided to paint along with me today, I would love to see your work. Please post it anywhere on social. Just make sure you at Paint with Jade so that I'm able to check it out. And with your permission, share it because I would love for more people to see what you did. This does bring us to the end of this video, unfortunately, but we have another paint along to look forward to next month. Um, if you have any suggestions for what kind of content you'd like to see as far as paint alongs go, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe as well if you like the content. Um, I put out a new video every Thursday and I've also launched a Patreon that if we get enough pledges, I'll start releasing Patreon exclusive videos as well. So with all that said, I will leave links below for you to check out. And in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your today, a fantastic week, a good now, and a wonderful tomorrow.